Hi everyone, welcome to Unit 5. Um, in this unit, we're going to be talking about transcendental functions. And transcendental functions are uh, logs, logarithms and exponentials. And in calculus, we're going to use natural log uh, pretty much exclusively and not log base 10 not the, or any of the other logs, log base E. So um, here are the objectives. Please be sure and write these objectives down in your composition notebook. And then my suggestion is, as I work examples, that you stop the video, work the examples, and then uh, come back and see how it was done. Let's get started. This is a graph over here of the, um, the E, the exponential base E graph, and then the natural log graph. And you can see that the two graphs are inverses of each other. That beginning packet that we used in uh, calculus class where we reviewed that, that had this exact one on here. Um, but I wanted to show you that the natural log is actually defined to be the integral um, from 1 to x of 1 over x dx, um, where x is greater than 0. And so the fundamental theorem of calculus has come into play again. Now, remember the general power rule. Um, when you're just basically integrating a polynomial, remember that you are taking n plus 1, you're adding 1 to the exponent over that exponent plus c. And then it had a disclaimer here that said n cannot be negative 1. All right, so the general power rule does not apply when n is negative 1. Now think about what that means. If you had negative 1 plus 1, that would be 0 over 0, and we cannot divide by 0. So that's why that exclusion exists. So, um, so we need help from a function that is not trigonometric or algebraic. We need a logarithmic function. So the derivative of the natural log function, um, by, the second, by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of natural log is going to be 1 over x. That's its derivative. All right, and we are talking about derivatives. We've been in integrals all this time, and now we're switching gears and talking about derivatives again with natural logs. So in general, if I have a u here, this is going to be 1 over u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So write this rule. This is really important. Okay, so let's do some examples. So right here, we want to take the derivative of y. So we want y prime is, and we said it is 1 over u, which is 1 over x squared plus 3, times the derivative, which is 2x. So if you wrote that all together, you would have 2x over x squared plus 3 is the derivative of, the, of that natural log. Okay, and then this one, same deal, we would have um, y prime, because we're taking the derivative. You could also put dy dx is um, over 2x times the derivative, which is 2, which just happens to be 1 over x. Of course, you can also extend this derivative to using the power rule. We're going to review all the rules that we use. So on this one, if you remember, the power rule is first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And so you have um, x over x, which is 1, plus the natural log of x is the derivative. We can also use the chain rule, right? This is the inside. So if we take the derivative, we take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And so that's what we have right here. Um, you can also just write it, you know, like all of this over x instead of that, and that's the same thing. So once again, if I rewrite this, we're going to use the chain rule again. So I have the natural log of x plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? So I can use the chain rule on this. Um, but I can also do something else. I can remember that this is something to a power and rewrite it. Notice I haven't taken the derivative yet and rewrite it as the natural log of x plus 1. And then that would be when I take the derivative, 1 half times um, x plus 1 times the derivative, which is that. Now I could have done this a harder way. You know, if I, if I did this over here and I did um, y prime was 
1 over x plus 1 square root times 1 half x plus 1 to the um, negative 1 half, right? And then I move that down here, and then I have, I still end up with the same thing, 1 over 2 x plus 1 to the x, 1 half plus 1 half is just 1. So I get the same thing. Um, but this is far superior using the properties of logs, which we talked about in class and reviewed it, but this is the power rule. And if you'll rewrite it with the power rule, it makes the derivative much easier. So what happens if we have the absolute value, right? If we have the um, derivative of the natural log of u, the absolute value of u is just the derivative over u. It's the same thing. So here, it looks like we've got more chain rule. So y prime is going to be 1 over cosine x times um, the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. And if you'll recall, negative sine x over cosine x is negative tangent x. So whether it has the absolute value there or not, basically what it's doing is keeping that um, argument positive. And so you don't treat it any differently. Okay, so this looks awful. I, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if you think about trying to take it the traditional way where you do y prime is one over all of that times the derivative of all of that, that seems daunting. So once again, let's use our log rules to rewrite this. And you'll see when you use the log rules to rewrite it, it's so much easier to take the derivative. So once again, let's just take each part. No, I'm not taking the derivative. So I'm just y equals. So I have this one. So I have the natural log of x. This is on the top. So it's plus. The exponent is 2. Natural log of x to the third plus 4. And then I have the bottom, so that's minus. And then it's 1 half, because it's all of it to the 1 half power, the natural log of 4x squared minus 4. Now, for some of you, that was really fast. And so what I would like for you to do is stop the video and look and see how I got from here to here. And I used the power, I used all three rules. I used the power rule, I used uh, the product rule, and I used the quotient rule. So take a look at that and how I rewrote it, because now the next step is to find the derivative. So this is 1 over x plus 2 over x to the third plus 4 times 3x squared minus, and then I have the 2 in the bottom, and so this is 4x squared minus 4 times the derivative, which is 8x which is doable. The other is not doable, this is. So we're gonna work a lot more of these in class, but I would like for you to take a look at these and once again, go back over the log rules because they will save your life. <laughs> See you in class.